All right, hello everyone and welcome to the SSDA Virtual College Fair. It's a pleasure to have you here today. We've got a number of great schools who are joining us today and ready to share some amazing information about their institutions with you all. So just a reminder, today is a six by six format virtual college fair. So what that means is we've got six amazing schools, like I said, ready to share information with you all in six minutes. So keep in mind, while they have so much information to share, six minutes is likely not enough to get to it all. So please do reach out to our presenters and our schools, use their contact information, hit up their websites, sign up for virtual or in-person visits if you can, um, because this is gonna give you a little taste of each school, but there's definitely a lot more to come. So you can ask questions throughout the session today by checking or hitting the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. So our presenters will see those questions come through and they'll answer them privately. They may also share some contact information with you in the chat or some links, so feel free to check that out. They can't see or hear you though because everybody's microphone um, and videos are off in this webinar format but they will answer your questions in the, in the Q&A um, feature that I just described. Recording will be available for this session and all of the sessions today. If you go to strivescan.com slash SSDA, you'll be able to watch these recordings in about a week on demand um, so that that helps afterwards if you wanna go back and check out some information. So without further ado, we're gonna kick things off and we're gonna go over to Kim at Sacred Heart University to be able to share information. Hi there. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Danielle. Um, hope everyone can see my screen. All right. Uh, my name is Kim Perrett. I am with Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, Connecticut. Sacred Heart is a private Roman Catholic university, um, and Fairfield is actually located about an hour outside of New York City. So I know we have a lot of students on here from all over the country. So in case you're not super familiar with Connecticut, uh, we are located more toward the uh, New York City area. Uh, there's my information and I'll have that up on the slide um, at the end as well. So I wanna go over a little bit about uh, academics at Sacred Heart. Uh, we do have five colleges of study, our College of Arts and Sciences, which houses our School of Communication, Media, and the Arts, and that does include our sports communication major, which is becoming more and more popular every day, and our School of Social Work. Uh, we have an Isabel Farrington College of Education, our Jack Welch College of Business and Technology, which does house our School of Computer Science and Engineering. Some of those more interesting majors are game design and cybersecurity, super popular. And our award-winning Davis and Henley College of Nursing, this is a direct entry program and it's ranked best in Connecticut. Um, and we also have our College of Healthcare Professions. We have two campuses, our main campus and our west campus. We're really growing and our west campus is fairly new, about a quarter of a mile down the road. Uh, we, uh, we have 5,600 graduate, undergraduate students and then our total student population is 8,400. Um, that includes our graduate students. We are ranked in the top 10 for happiest students. I always like to say that because it, it means, wow, what a great place to go to, to college um, where we're ranked for happiest students. We do have two campuses abroad. One is in Ireland and one is in Luxembourg. And then we work with 30 other countries on study abroad programs. We offer individualized attention in the classroom. Average class size is about 22. I just wanna talk a little bit more about our College of Healthcare Professions because it's very popular at Sacred Heart. As you can see, the undergraduate programs, there are only three listed here, but we have so many graduate health professions programs and students are actually able as freshmen, coming in as a freshman, you can be pre-admitted into these master's and doctorate programs. And uh, we find that a lot of students are interested in doing this. They already know what they wanna do. They just wanna have that six or seven year pathway already set out for them. So that is possible at Sacred Heart. Super important, um, I think all of us are going to say this to you today, to get involved outside your academic area and get involved with clubs and organizations. We have so much to do at Sacred Heart, lots of clubs and organizations. We're actually ranked number 10 in the country for students um, who give back to the community. So that's a huge part of Sacred Heart. Our students really do have that heart for service. So um, we are affiliated with Habitat for Humanity and a, a lot of other volunteer programs as well. 
We do um, have frater uh, fraternities and sororities at Sacred Heart, um, but one of the big things about SHU, and you can see from these pictures, is our NCAA Div Division I athletic teams. We are a big uh, sports-oriented school. There's always some kind of athletic activity going on, Third, over 35 club sports as well. So even if you're not an athlete, I hope that you enjoy sports if you go to Sacred Heart because there's always something happening in that area. Also pretty big in performing arts as well. So it's nice being close to New York City for that. We have tons of band, orchestra, guard, choral programs, dance programs, theater arts, plus an active campus ministry. And we actually just opened a brand new diversity and inclusion center as well. I uh, just wanted to show some photos of campus because as I said, we are growing. Uh, we're one of the fastest growing Catholic universities in the country right now. Uh, growing in programs, growing in student enrollment, and growing in facilities, obviously. And some of our uh, highlights here are our new um, upper quad, which is our new residence halls. We're working now on our lower quad. So we have so many um, new residence halls. So they're beautiful. I really highly encourage you guys to uh, go onto our website or go onto YouTube, take a look at all of our new um, buildings and things like that. We really have a very modern feel on campus. And here's just a little bit more information. Sacred Heart used to be a place where you, you couldn't live all four years on campus, but now you can't. We have so many of these new residence halls that are so beautiful. Um, so you must live on campus for the first two years. And then uh, after sophomore year, you can move off or you can stay. Uh, for our admissions requirements, um, pretty easy. We're Common App exclusive, um, high school transcript, letter of recommendation, interview with an admissions rep. We are test optional, have been for quite a while. Our average GPA uh, for most students is about a 3.4 and average for nursing is more like a 3.738. 3.8. We do offer scholarships for every student who is accepted. Um, you will receive some type of merit scholarship uh, going up to about 18,000 per year, which are renewable. Many other grants uh, here based, you can see based on um, interest or audition. And if you would like to uh, have uh, institutional aid from Sacred Heart, you must fill out the CSS profile and of course federal aid uh, with the FAFSA. And here is my information and I will also put that in the chat box as well. Thank you so much. Very good. Thank you, Kim, for sharing information about Sacred Heart. And at this point, we'll kick it over to Caitlin from UConn. All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Caitlin Wilcox Perry. And I'm one of the admission officers at the University of Connecticut. Um, I hope to provide a brief intro to UConn and all that we have to offer, including some academic programs and student life on campus. And I'll also include a list of some virtual resources at the end of the presentation as well, so you can continue exploring UConn even after this is over. So at the University of Connecticut, we are annually ranked among the top 25 public universities in the nation. This is something that we are extremely proud of. It's something that our students take great pride in as well. Um, and at UConn, we actually have five campuses spread throughout the state of Connecticut. We have around 24,000 total undergrads across all five campuses um, with around 19,000 of those undergrads at our main campus, which is located in stores. So as I just mentioned, UConn's campuses are truly spread out throughout the state of Connecticut with regional campuses in Hartford, Waterbury, Avery Point, and Stamford. Um, the main campus is in Storrs, Connecticut. It's conveniently located in the northeastern part of the state. So we're about an hour and a half from Boston and about two and a half hours from New York City. Um, and Storrs is a rural town. So if you ever get to come and visit, the first thing that you'll probably notice is our huge farm that we have on campus. Um, we started as a school of agriculture back when we were founded, and it's still a really big part of our campus community. Um, even today, we have farm animals, farm facilities, and we actually have our own dairy bar at UConn where we make our own ice cream. Um, so jumping into the academic programs at UConn, we have over 115 majors and over 320 minors and concentrations. 
All of our majors are housed into 10 different schools and colleges. So our top most selective programs can be found in the School of Business, School of Engineering, and the School of Nursing. And we also do offer some unique academic opportunities, some pre-professional programs through our special programs in law, medicine, dental medicine, and education. And students admitted into these programs have the opportunity to earn both their bachelor's degree and their graduate degree here at UConn. Um, but approximately 41% of our students are enrolled in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, which houses some of our most popular programs, including psychology, communication, biology, and political science. And if you're not sure exactly what you'd like to study, you can always come in undecided. We have a great set of academic advisors that will work with you to help figure out what your interests are and how those align to the different academic programs that we have to offer. Uh, and even though we do have a larger campus population, our student faculty ratio is 16 to one and our average class size is around 30 to 35 students. So that gives our students the opportunity to attend a larger school, but still have that smaller campus feel within the classroom. Um, so as you may or may not know, our students at UConn have a lot of school spirit. Men's and women's basketball games are some of our most popular events. They are free for students to attend. We also do have over 700 different clubs and organizations for students to take part in, including Greek life, so sororities and fraternities. We have a skydiving club, acapella groups, dance groups, um, and really so much more. So there is truly something for everyone here at UConn. Um, and if we don't have what you're looking for, it's really easy to grab a few friends and start your own club as well. Um, at the university, we also do understand the importance of experiential hands-on learning opportunities in the form of internships, um, co-ops, shadowing, and more. So every year we have over 700 different companies actively on our campus, actively recruiting our students. Community service is also really important to our students here. This photo is actually from one of our big community service events called Huskython. It's an 18 hour dance marathon, um, completely student run where our students get together to raise money for the Connecticut Children's Medical Center. Um, and this past year, they raised a little over $1.5 million for the event. So it's a huge success. It's become a UConn tradition. I always tell students, if you choose to come to UConn, this will definitely be a part of your experience here. Um, and we also do have over 135 study abroad experiences. So if you are interested in taking your education outside of UConn, outside of the United States, we offer these experiences to all students of all majors. Um, and you can take it you can take the experience when it's convenient for you. So we do offer the typical semester long trips and we also do offer short term trips during winter break, spring break and summer break as well. Um, so just going to quickly move through the application process. Um, when you apply to UConn, if you are thinking of applying to UConn, we do a holistic review when evaluating your application for admission. So that means we're looking at every single piece of your application to make our decisions. Um, so not just focusing solely on your academic information. We're also taking into account extracurricular involvement, personal qualities, and any additional factors that can be revealed in your essay and in your optional letters of recommendation. And this holistic review also applies to our merit scholarship and honors consideration as well, so there is no separate application required. UConn is also now test optional beginning for students applying into this, um, this past year, 2021-2022, and it'll continue, um, but no student will be disadvantaged if they choose um, not to submit their scores. This also applies for merit scholarship and honors. I'll skip through the deadlines because they're so far away from now. Um, and you'll also get notification about this if you're on our mailing list. This is my contact info. If you do have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to me and definitely take a look at our website for any virtual experiences that we have. Thank you so much, Caitlin. And feel free to drop that information in the chat and for those attending today to be able to check the chat for that information um, to use it for yourself. So at this point, we'll go over to Amy from Wesleyan to be able to share information about your institution. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. I'm so excited to tell you a little bit about Wesleyan. Um, this is, um, oh goodness, I think I didn't share it correctly. <laughs> Here we go. There we go. Now we're up. Um, so 
This is Wesleyan. Um, welcome. So Wesleyan uh, University is a small liberal arts college in Middletown, Connecticut. Um, so we kind of have been around Connecticut a little bit with Fairfield and UConn. Um, we are right in the middle of Connecticut, kind of along the Connecticut River. Um, it kind of runs down along our main street and then our campus is situated on top of a hill, not that far away, about a little walk up the hill onto campus. Um, we are about equidistant between Boston and New York City, about like an hour and a half, two hour commute, either by plane, train, automobile, whatever your method of transportation is. Um, but so you totally can access those two spaces um, if you are like kind of looking to take a little break, a little vacation for the weekend. But most of our activities totally do happen on campus. Um, we have a student body here at Wesleyan with about 3,000 undergrad and 200 graduate students. Um, so we do have a lot kind of happening academically on campus. And a lot of um, the student events definitely happen in the classroom and bridge kind of beyond. Um, academically, what we're offering to the undergrad space is this open curriculum. Um, and a a lot of interdisciplinary coursework. Um, so kind of this open curriculum, what that means for undergrad students is that there are no core required classes that need to be taken by all students throughout their four years at Wesleyan. So kind of what that looks like is that every class that you are taking as a student, you are electing to be a part of, and then really kind of builds this academic culture of a lot of collaboration, a lot of excitement, and a lot of ability to explore different academic areas um, that just might pique your interest even beyond your declared major. Um, so so there are no core required classes that need to be taken. However, there are a couple of requirements that you need in order to graduate. There are two, they're really easy to remember. Essentially you need 32 credits um, throughout your four years and you need at least one declared major. So 32 credits, it's about one um, class per credit and it's about four classes a semester. So kind of like taking a little breath, a little depth in your areas um, and then one declared major. So what that looks like is that actually every student at Wesleyan comes in undeclared. So you totally do not have to know what you're thinking about. Coming in at a declared actually really kind of opens up um, your mind and really kind of sets this uh, kind of collective culture that all students are really exploring those first years. So really kind of getting a breath of exploration those first years of undergrad um, and then those last years after you declare really getting that depth and kind of mastery of skill set and whatever you're declaring. Um, there are 45 different majors, 17 minors and 12 certificates offered at Wesleyan. So a lot of different options. And one of those majors is actually a university major, which is kind of the Chipotle of academia, I like to say, which is kind of taking classes that are offered in our curriculum. And you as a student are kind of leaping them together and seeing how they connect. So you can kind of really pitch your own major. Um, that sounds exciting to you. And students have done um, kind of environmental research, so micro, um, you know, marine biology research. Some of them are in urban studies. So you can really take it in any direction. Um, and it really kind of shows the creativity of the students and how they are piecing together and really working within this interdisciplinary um, academic options that we have here at Wesleyan. Um, and so we have this really great kind of open curriculum, interdisciplinary undergrad um, experience. But also what makes us a bit unique is that we do have a graduate school at Wesleyan. Um, so that really kind of makes us that university. Um, so Wesleyan is a liberal arts undergrad experience, but we're also a fully funded university. So we have a full range of equipment and a lot of research labs on campus that are available to all students, regardless of your current class. So getting involved in graduate research, PhD research um, is totally possible as early as your first year on campus. Um, if you are excited about um, kind of the sciences, you can totally get um, your hands in there. And we have equipment all the way from kind of microscopes to telescopes and everything in between. Um, and there's this really cool lab on campus that kind of takes, um, it's called the Ideas Lab. It stands for the Integrative Design, Engineering and Applied Sciences. So kind of taking like studio art professors and hard science professors and throwing them in the same room with like a 3D printer in front of them. So a lot of opportunity to kind of blend together a lot Lot of different ideas you might have with creative design and then the engineering space to really kind of make your ideas come to life um, with a lot of um, really incredible professors and students to do it with you. Um, we do have a couple of cool programs. There's one program called the BAMA program at Wesleyan where you do four years undergrad and kind of doing research in some capacity throughout those four years. Um, and then you can stay a fifth year tuition waived free and get a master's in that area of research. Um, and that fifth year is really kind of 
continuing research that you've been doing um, throughout your four years and really working with the faculty as more of a mentor rather than a person telling you what to do and what to take, really taking your research and bringing it to life and um, allowing you to write a master's thesis and then that master's thesis and degree is also free at the end of the day, which is an incredible opportunity um, to just continue your studies that you've been doing all the way throughout that time. So a lot of academic um, kind of opportunities that are happening in a lot of different directions. And the really cool thing is that because it's this open curriculum, you really have a lot of agency in what classes you're taking um, and when you take them. So kind of if you compare two students next to each other, um, it really is hard to compare. So it really does create this collaborative space. Um, and yes, if you are interested in kind of learning more about Wesleyan, definitely check out our website. There's so many, um, there's so much information on there. We also have this really cool thing called West Chats. If you sign up online, you can have a half an hour, hour long conversation um, with a current student at Wesleyan to kind of just pick their brain and ask them about their experience, especially in this virtual space. So a really great opportunity there as well. Um, if you have any questions for me, totally reach out. My information is on the bottom of that page there with my email. Um, and thank you guys so much for listening and coming. And I'd love to answer any questions you might have down the line. Um, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Amy. All right, so we're gonna go over to Bryant University and I turn it over to Amanda. Hello there, everyone. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to uh, introducing and kicking off the Rhode Island schools. Um, my name is Amanda Crow and I'm one of the assistant directors of admission um, here at Bryant University. Um, if you're unfamiliar with us, we are located in Smithfield, Rhode Island, uh, which is about 15 minutes from Providence and about 45 minutes from Boston. Um, so we're a close location to two major airports. So if you're from the West Coast on this call, easy to get here and come visit us. We're about 3,400 undergraduate students. We are a private university and we represent about 38 different states and about 44 different countries. So we truly have students from all over. I'm gonna to focus today on some of the things that makes Bryant unique. Um, and one of those things is the way that we have our curriculum set up. And we have something at Bryant called an integrated curriculum. So at Bryant, we have a college of business as well as a college of arts and sciences. And you are actually required, but we see it as an opportunity to study in both schools. So you will major in one school and minor in the other school. So if you are a business major, you minor in our College of Arts and Sciences. If you're an arts and sciences major, you minor in our College of Business. So this gives you a really well-rounded curriculum. Uh, when you're applying to Bryant, you're just applying to the university. So you don't have to worry about being accepted into a program. And especially if you're undecided, you really will take that first year to explore these different major minor combinations. Um, to give you some examples of how this works at Bryant, for example, students have done marketing in our College of Business and a psychology minor to better understand how people think and then apply it to their marketing techniques. We've also had students in our politics and law pre-law track um, do that in College of Arts and Sciences, and they may choose to minor in our entrepreneurship minor because they know that someday they'd like to open up their own law firm. So we truly are um, here to help you develop your passions and figure out different major minor combinations to get you to the point that you'd like to get to. Um, but again, do not be stressed if you're unsure what you want to study. We have about 150 different major minor combinations. Uh, we also have graduate programs at Bryant. We just uh, launched a three plus one program. So you get your undergraduate degree in three years and your MBA in one year. We do have a part-time MBA program and a master's of public accounting. And we also have a physician's assistant program on campus. And we also just launched a three plus three program for um, politics and law in law school with Roger Williams University. So some exciting things happening at Bryant. Um, we're a school where we really do want you to know your faculty and them to know you. So average class size is about 25 students. Most of the class would ever be would be 35 students. So we never have those huge lecture style classes at Bryant. It's not really our style. We're more hands-on conversation based. We want you to, again, know your faculty, know the other students in your classes. And all of our courses are taught by faculty. So we don't have any other uh, teaching assistants at Bryant. So those faculty are going to have real great connections within the field and be able to help you again when thinking about internships and job opportunities. Another thing about Brian's culture is that Brian's students are involved. So I know that someone else mentioned it. Getting involved is very important at Bryant, really uh, enhances your campus life experience. Um, so we are a Division I athletic school. We have 22 Division I teams. Uh, we also have club and intramural sports. So if you're a student athlete, that gives you a lot of opportunity to continue with your sport. If you're somebody who's not necessarily an athlete, but you love a school as school spirit, we are certainly one of those schools. 
And we also have about 110 clubs and organizations for you to get involved in as well. So every semester you'll have the opportunity to see all of the different ways to get involved on campus. Um, those clubs and organizations range from identity-based organizations, we do have Greek life on campus, community service. So there really is a wide variety and something for everyone. Um, another thing that's a huge focus at Bryant is experiential learning. So um, at Bryant, in your first year, you start working with career services. This isn't something that you have to wait until your junior year for. You'll have plenty of opportunities to meet with career services and explore different opportunities. About 87% of our students do at least one internship. Many of them will do more than one given the different major minor combinations in our integrated curriculum. They really get a chance to try out different fields and see what feels like a good fit. Um, you can also do an internship at any point during your time at Bryant. Most students will do one in their junior year summer, um, and the majority of our internships are paid internships. You truly can treat it as a part-time job. Um, even with the pandemic, we were able to have our employers come on campus. So every semester, we have an internship and career fair where about 400 employers come each semester to recruit our students. We have partnerships with companies like Target, Fidelity, Amica Insurance, to name a few. So there's definitely opportunities for you to connect with global companies as well. Um, most of our students, as I said, do that internship junior year summer, and it's not uncommon for a Bryant student to come back from their junior year summer with a job offer already in place. Um, and because of that, we have a 99% success rate with our students getting either in graduate school or a job within six months of graduation. So if you'd love to go right into the job market, wonderful. We also, as I mentioned, have graduate programs at Bryant. But we also will help you find graduate schools if we don't have something to offer you. Um, outside of internships and job opportunities, service learning is something that's very important at Bryant. It's also integrated into our curriculum. And we're also a school that really wants our students to be global citizens. And so we really encourage that cultural emergent experience. Um, of course, we have traditional study abroad programs, but we also are a school that has a unique program called the Sophomore International Experience. Uh, that course is a course you take in your sophomore year and you focus on a specific country. And then at the end of the semester for 10 to 14 days, you and your class will actually go to that country to look at the things that you've been studying. So it's a shortened condensed cultural immersion experience. It may confirm for you that you'd like to go abroad, but for other students, they find that that's a great way for them to get off campus without doing that. Um, just to give you some insights into applying at Bryant, we are in the common application. Uh, we have been and will continue to be test optional at Bryant. So that is something to consider. Um, you can see on here some of our averages as well. We have many different deadlines for you to consider when looking. And everyone who applies to Bryant is reviewed for merit scholarships. So you do not need to do anything additional for that. Um, I'm looking forward to working with you and I, here's my contact information should you need it. I'll also put that in the chat for you as well and looking forward to answering any questions you have about Bryant. Thank you very much, Amanda, for your time and for presenting. We'll go over to Johnson Wales University and I turn it over to Renee. Thank you. Give me one quick second to get set up. All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Renee D'Onofrio, and I'm with Johnson & Wales University. I actually am also an alum from our College of Hospitality. Um, Johnson & Wales is a private, not-for-profit university, and we've been in existence for over 100 years. Our main campus was founded in Providence, Rhode Island, and then we also have a regional campus located in Charlotte, North Carolina. So the great thing about having the two campuses is once you're accepted at one, you're actually accepted at both locations. So we actually have students going from one campus to the other. Same curriculum, so you won't miss a beat and you'll pick right back up where you left off at the prior campus. Now our campus in Rhode Island, we're centered right in the center of the city of Providence. Providence is a very compact city, very walkable. You do not need a car to get around. We have a great public transportation system. And in addition to Johnson & Wales, there's four other colleges and universities. So it's a very young city. It's always changing with a new group of students that are coming in. So there's about 30,000 college students in the city itself. Um, we've been noted by Money Magazine as one of their top universities. And even though number-wise we're considered a medium-sized university, we are at that lower end. So we only do have just over 6,700 undergraduate students on campus with us in Providence. Now in Charlotte, very similar, we're right in the center of the city within walking distance to all the major attractions and the athletic teams that play in the area. And Charlotte's actually home to the second largest contingency of Fortune 500 companies, just second to New York City. 
So this allows our students to really dive into their major if they wanted to get a part-time job or once that internship program comes along within their uh, study of major. So we're right there again, very walkable city. We're right in the mix of everything. Now they were noted by the Wall Street Journal as one of their top universities. And again, definitely on the smaller side with just over 1500 students. But again, keep in mind, once you're accepted at one, you are accepted at both. Now at Johnson and Wales, we do have six schools and colleges and new majors are being introduced every year. Right now we have over 60 majors. There's quite a bit of growth in our College of Engineering, our College of Health and Wellness. And what's really put us on the map is our College of Culinary Arts, which is now known as the College of Food Innovation and Technology. So anything and everything to do with food, Johnson & Wales is one of the top universities throughout the world. We also do have our College of Business and that's how we started at Johnson & Wales way back when. We have our uh, College of Hospitality, which was ranked number seventh in the world uh, just this past few months. And then we have our College of Arts and Sciences. So lots of different majors, many new ones again being introduced each year just to kind of keep up with what's going on in our world. Now at Johnson & Wales, our curriculum is very different from some of the larger colleges and universities that you may hear from throughout your time joining us at StriveScan. The curriculum at Johnson & Wales, you jump in as a freshman taking classes specific to your major. So right from day one, you are in classes that you want to focus in on. So whether you're a fashion design major, a biology major, a culinary arts or baking and pastry arts student, you take those classes right from the beginning. And we're more of a hands-on lab-based learning program. So you'll never be in a class with 500 students. You'll be working side by side with your professor, whether you're in Providence or whether you're in Charlotte. And again, it's more hands-on lab-based learning. Our classes are definitely on the smaller side. So you're not going to be impacted waiting to get those classes. You won't be fighting for lab time. Small classes allow you to get the classes and the time that you need. Now, the third part of our curriculum that's a little bit different as well is we believe in internships. Many of our majors actually require two internships. So our students are out of the class, applying what they've learned those first two years and working out in the field with professionals. So these are some numbers, I won't read them all, but um, ones that I do want you to take away today is the 71% of, 71% of our students actually have a job offer from the company that they internship with. So many internships these days are paid. Many students are making over $20 an hour, but 71% do have a job offer from that company even prior to receiving their diploma. So that's huge knowing who and where you're going to work once college is through. And 97.7% of our students that graduate have a job they're going on to grad school or they're opening up their own business. So we are making sure that our students are set up to be successful right from day one freshman year. Now, as I mentioned, you know, you'll never be in a lecture hall with 500 students. That's not who we are. 18 to one is our ratio. So 18 students to one professor. Our classes are not being led by teaching assistants. You're working side by side in those lab based environments. They're your mentors. I can come back 20 years after I've been out of college and many of our professors are still involved with the university in some way or form. So again, working side by side with them as a mentor versus a professor. We have study abroad at Johnson & Wales. Lots of ways to get involved, over 150 clubs and organizations. And like my colleagues have said, the more involved you are, the more uh, fun you'll have at college. It definitely makes it a more plentiful experience. We have housing at Johnson & Wales and we do also require two years on campus. We're part of the NCAA. Many students from actually the West Coast are participating with our athletic teams. So reach out to our coaches if you have an interest. And I, again, I mentioned we're not-for-profit. 94% of our students do receive financial assistance. The merit scholarships are awarded and they range up to $23,500. We work with the government on the FAFSA. We know it's difficult to get on campus, so check out our virtual programs from home. You can talk with students or professors or enjoy a tour followed by a question and answer period. Our deadline to apply is March 1st. 
We have been and always will be test optional. And we have an honors program too. I'll put my contact information in the chat box, but thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Renee, for sharing today and for putting your contact info in there in the chat for our students who might be looking for it. And last but certainly not least, we're gonna go over to Martin at Providence. Great, thank you so much. And we're gonna keep this. Uh, we're gonna keep this in Providence. Uh, can everybody see my screen okay? Not able to see it yet, Martin. Let's let's oh. give that another try. All right, it looks like it's kicking off right now. There we go. Oh, perfect. Okay, thank you so much. So again, uh, my name is Martin Vaughn. I am one of the uh, associate deans in the Office of Admissions at Providence College. And let's see here. Uh, hopefully, this is hopefully this is okay. Save the most technologically challenged person uh, for the end. But um, you can see all the definitions here. Uh, and certainly, I absolutely agree with all of the faculty members here, our current students, uh, recent graduates, things like that, um, by all means. But what I really want you to do is to, uh, to really define Providence for yourself. Uh, we are a Dominican Catholic University, uh, again, obviously in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, one question I get often is, how Catholic are you? Uh, yes, we have about 75% of our students who identify as Catholic. Uh, certainly that is part of who we are, but absolutely not all of who we are. Uh, we do have about 50 uh, friars who live and work on campus uh, in a variety of different areas. So certainly, as you could imagine, uh, many in campus ministry, uh, many on the faculty, and even uh, a friar in our own admissions office. Um, we love being in the biggest city in the smallest state in the country. Um, Providence is an amazing place, uh, as my colleagues uh, have already told you, uh, really in the heart of New England, just an hour from Boston, about three hours from New York City. Uh, our campus sits just two miles from downtown, uh, and as others have said, great public transportation. So it really gives our students easy access to the city uh, without being in the middle of the city. Um, as you can see, um, you know, pretty small undergraduate population size, and I really feel that it is the ideal size for students. I think it is big enough that it really provides lots and lots of opportunities uh, for students, but I think it's also, um, you know, intimate enough that, you know, you really don't ever feel overwhelmed uh, at Providence. Uh, academically, you can see here, uh, spread out across the three schools, we offer 53 majors and 40 minors from which you can choose. Uh, and while biology is our largest individual or single major, uh, we have over 40% of our students uh, enrolled in the business school. Uh, so you can see those uh, four majors there. Uh, I really feel like, um, you know, in my opinion, probably one of the most unique programs that we offer uh, is our health policy and management major. Uh, we were the first school in the country to offer a bachelor's degree in public and community service studies. Uh, and we are certainly excited to announce uh, a new major uh, starting, technically already started this spring, uh, in music technology and production. So um, hoping that soon, once this pandemic is under control, we will actually be uh, permitted to travel to other countries. Uh, study abroad is a really big part of life uh, for PC students. Uh, you can see over 60% of our students participating annually, uh, over 300 different programs uh, in 40 different countries. Uh, as, and as a lot of other folks have said before, uh, a lot of what I feel really helps to shape and mold uh, your campus experience is really what happens outside of the classroom. Uh, so my guess is whatever you're involved with, you know, currently at your school, uh, in all likelihood, we have it at Providence. Uh, so it could be anything from a, the Gaelic dance team to an esports team uh, to the outdoor adventure club. So again, the more active you are, I think the better your college experience is going to be. Um, uh, we are petitioning um, the uh, federal government to change the name of Providence to Friartown. 
Uh, we feel that's a much, much better name uh, for Providence. Um, athletics, certainly a big part of who we are uh, at PC. Uh, we are Division I uh, members of the Big East Conference for all of our sports, with the exception of hockey, both hockey programs playing uh, in Hockey East. Uh, one of my favorite student organizations you can see there on the right uh, are the Friar Fanatics. Um, and what better student organization uh, could you be a part of than one that simply goes to athletic events to cheer on our Friar sports teams? So just wanna talk briefly about the application process. Uh, we are Common App exclusive at, at PC. Uh, we have been test optional uh, for 15 years and will remain so for the foreseeable future. Uh, one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle in our evaluation process is the strength of your curriculum. You know, how much have you challenged yourself? What's the level of rigor uh, in your coursework in comparison to what's available to you at your school? Uh, we do uh, uh, recalculate GPA, so I think that's important to note. Uh, in that the GPA that we use in our internal valuation is probably going to look a lot more like your unweighted GPA uh, that probably appears uh, on your transcript and certainly a holistic review. Uh, it is not a computer program. Um, all files are read at least twice uh, prior to, to making any kind of decision. Uh, and certainly, uh, we hope very soon that the state of Rhode Island will allow us to uh, bring more folks onto campus. Uh, and certainly, whether that's later this spring or this summer, uh, we hope that we'll be able to expand those visit opportunities. Uh, but for now, I hope you enjoy some of the uh, virtual visit options uh, that we have provided for you. And I will put my contact information into uh, the chat. And thanks so much for joining me today. All right, terrific. Thank you so much, Martin. And thank you to all of our presenters here today for sharing information about your different schools um, and institutions for our attendees today. So at this point, with a couple of minutes left, I just want to quickly be able to go around and, and ask our presenters if you can weigh in on advice that you would share for our students about the college search process. Um, so we'll start back up at the top, um, go around in the same presenting order that we had originally begin with. So we'll go over to you, Kim. Okay, uh, thanks. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the essay. Um, I've been doing a lot of essay workshops lately and I'm finding that students are really nervous about the essay. And I just wanna say, just relax and enjoy it. Enjoy the opportunity to, to uh, have the admissions officers get to know you better because we can't really tell anything about your personality by your transcript. So this is your opportunity to tell us about yourself and don't, just don't stress out about it. We don't expect to read an essay from a 35 year old. We expect to read an essay from a 17 or 18 year old. So that's my advice. Thank you. Um, I would also that's say that's a really great point, Kim. I, I definitely echo that. Um, when you're searching for call, oh, I just realized my video is not. <laughs> um, when you're searching for colleges, I would just say kind of explore outside of where your comfort level is. So um, there's so many really great schools that a lot of people don't know about. Um, and now that most of us um, have really upped up our virtual experiences and virtual resources, this is the perfect time to explore and see what is out there, um, what scholarship opportunities are out there that you might not know about. Um, and a lot of us are available all the time now uh, via email. So just reach out and, and explore those schools that you might not have um, originally had on your list. Great sentiments from my colleague. Oh, I, I just cut someone off. I, I went before Amy, I was very excited. Amy, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> no worries, the lines. <laughs> um, but yeah, to kind of like echo what everyone's saying is like, yeah, like this is the time to explore. This is the time to like also showcase you. I always like to highlight how like, you know, everyone's an individual in this process. And also like, this is such an active process. Like, yes, like there's a side of like, you know, you're sitting in an application and like people are kind of like evaluating you, but you're also like choosing a school, like you're choosing a school that has fit for you. So I think like really embracing that of like everyone's unique and therefore everyone's process of getting to college is going to be unique. So to like really embrace your path. And if you kind of get like stumbling into a college that you wouldn't have otherwise like thought to explore, this is the time to do it. So so ask those questions, meet those people and explore. And yes, totally, totally, like Clayton said, like reach out to the people because we have so much information to give and point you in those directions that might be um, exciting for you. Yeah. 
And also I'm gonna share my information that I didn't send in the chat just now. So off to Amanda. Okay, finally my turn, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm very excited to give advice as you can tell. Um, I think that all the advice everyone's given is really great. Another thing I would say is um, thinking about demonstrated interest, many schools track that. And I know that right now it's hard to visit in person, but there's other ways to show that demonstrated interest. And that could be simply emailing, attending virtual events, things like that. It's a great way to make connections and really helpful for those schools that maybe down the line you get waitlisted on. They're going to be looking for students who show interest in their schools so something there. Um, also, if a school offers an interview and they say it's optional, it's usually highly encouraged. So take opportunities to interview with schools. It's a wonderful way, again, for you to get to know a school. It's your time to interview us, but it's also a great time for us to get to know more about you off the paper the application that we're reading. So take those opportunities. All right, so I would echo um, everything that my colleagues have said today because I feel like everything that they've said is so important. But I would also tell any student out there, and I've got three of my own who are in college or have gone through the college process, don't be afraid to come up and talk to us. I see so many students that are hesitant to, you know, make that first move, but, you know, I've put my kids through college, so I fairly well know what you're going through, but whatever, you know, the questions you have, feel free to reach out to any school because we are more than happy to answer those questions for you. There's like they said, so many options. Find the school that's the right fit for you, but ask those questions and don't be hesitant to do so. Thank you. If I could just say two quick things, uh, because I know we're all zoomed out uh, at this point in month 13 of this pandemic, but something that Amanda said just reminded me about, you know, sort of optional things in uh, the application process. Uh, one thing that uh, many of us offer our supplemental essays, and while they are listed as optional, so I, if you have an opportunity to give us, uh, you know, 250 more words, another paragraph uh, about how you might fit into our institutions, I think that's a great thing to do. Uh, my other quick piece of advice is uh, something that's important to, I, I know a lot of other schools, but particularly at Providence, is fit to major. And I know that's difficult to do since we, we're not allowed to do anything now, we can't go outside. But like your English teachers and your history teachers probably tell you when you're writing essays, show me, don't tell me. And what I mean by that is, uh, for example, if you're applying as an education major, I hope to see in your application something that connects you to education, that you've worked with children, that you've shadowed a teacher at your school, or maybe you do Sunday school at your your parish or your synagogue or something like that. So whatever your major is, hopefully you can show us some sort of connection uh, and fit to that program. Well, thank you again to all of our presenters. That was all great advice that you just shared in different dimensions of the college search process. And I think a big takeaway is to ask questions, find your fit um, and visit however you can. If it's virtually right now, that's great. If you can safely get there in person, that's amazing as well. So thank you for being with us. Uh, for those on the call, please note that there will be a quick survey once um, you end out of this window right here, quick short four question survey. Always great to get feedback. So we invite you to leave that there. Um, again, invitation to sign up for more sessions on the website where you signed up for this one. And again, the recording will be available in about a week um, at strivescan.com slash SSDA. So thank you for everybody's time. Um, stay well and have a great rest of the day. Thank you, Danielle. Bye, everyone. Nice to see you.